stage heading for Center City? Nope. Uh, Channing? Nope. You ain't lost, are you? Nope. Then where are you going? Amarillo. Good. So am I. My fastest selling items. Peddling novelties my trade and hire them shorts my name. Hire them short and fire them tall. That's what I always say. Get it? Your handle, sir? Me? Nugget Clark. Prospecting's my trade, staying single's my hobby. Pretty good. I mean, Mr. Underwood, retired businessman from New York, New Haven. Uh, Philadelphia. <laughs> Glad to know you, Mr. Clark. Howdy. Mr. <laughs> Underwood? I know some Underwoods down in Concho County about a few years back. There was kin to... Oh, sorry, I don't know them. This is my first trip west, and... Oh! Telling us just how fur that is. Over the hill, three or four miles. Well, we might as well start. How about it, Mr. Underwood? You want to stay here? Do you feel strong enough to walk? Well, let's walk. I can make it. All right. Hey, give us a lift. Box, when we get to halfway house, you want I should send you back some horses? Yep. Let's go. Come along, short. They'll be back in a minute. Good. Gotta make halfway house on schedule. <laughs> halfway house. Just over the next hill, about four or five miles. Dogs feel like it was 40 or 50. Well, let's go in.
please sit down? Sure, Mr. Underwood. Good evening, gentlemen. Be of assistance. You got any rooms? We want to get Mr. Underwood to bed right quick. He's been in a stage accident. And... Our other guests. May I recommend our most comfortable room for Mr. Underwood at the end of the hall, away from everything? Hire him. Give Mr. Underwood a hand, and I'll register for all of us. Yes, sir. There was three bandits that chasing the stage, and I drove them all off with one shot. Then the stage got wrecked, and it... That reminds me, the horse is busted loose. You better send someone back with a new team. Frightful tale of violence, sir. I'll see about the fresh horses. Right now, I'll have our porter, George, aid you with your luggage. George! He'll check those for you. George! I'll look in on Mr. Underwood. Oh, there you are. Check this luggage for this gentleman and then run... Hey, who are you talking to? A night porter, George. He'll take care of you. George, hitch up a fresh team for the stage. It's in trouble. As I said, I'll look in on Mr. Underwood. Pardon me, George. Uh, that guy must be crazy, talking to someone who isn't there. <laughs> They ain't got a night porter, why don't they say so? All this George, George talk. I wonder who they think they're fooling. <laughs> Stay, suit yourself. It's your funeral. Uh, Mr. Underwood is resting comfortably and I... Listen, mister. Get me a horse, a wagon, anything will get me out of here. I mean, I, I gotta get to Amarillo quick. I, 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 I got something important. Certainly. I'll have uh, George attend to it. Mr. Underwood, you all right? Oh, I'm, I'm feeling better, thank you. I think maybe you ought to get out of this place. Oh, no, no, I'm too tired. But in my luggage, there was... A... I, I took care of everything, Mr. Underwood, and, and, and here's your claim check. Uh, I gotta go to Amarillo tonight. Something, something uh, important. Uh, goodbye. Uh, goodbye, and thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much.
on, partner. Get over. Careful now. Well, you all right, old timer? Well, I don't know yet. Thanks, mister. So long. How'd you happen to fall out of the seat like that? Fall? Fall? Well, I jumped. Good exercise dragging along like that. Like I said before, so long. Now, look here, stranger. A minute ago, you thought I needed help, and you gave it to me. I said my thanks, and now I'm saying goodbye. You make another move to stop me, and ding dang it, I'll tell the marshal. Yeah? What marshal? Well, the fightingest marshal in the West. The Marshal of Amarillo. You know him? Know him? <laughs> Practically brung him up. By the way, what's his name? His name? Name? Uh, now, let me see. It's, 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 it's right on the tip end of my tongue. It's, um... His name's Lane. Rocky Lane. You? <laughs> Hi, Rocky. Nice to have met you, Marshal. How about staying right here while I take a look inside this wagon? Oh... Who's that? Hiram Short. He, he sells squidges, squalling cats, things like that. You mean he used to? And don't look at me. I use guns myself. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I used to. Where'd you see him alive last? At a place called Halfway House. Uh-huh. Well, you, the body, and the wagon are all going back to where you came from. Back to Halfway House? Ah, I ain't go back to that place. It's haunted. It, it's... Halfway House? Here I come. Sorry, Marshal. I'm Art Crandall, stage agent. Frank Welsh, the manager, is inside. Recognize that wagon? I got no wagons. Just stages. Listen, mister, explain to the Marshal about the six o'clock run yesterday evening. About the outlaws are chasing us, the accident, and the horses running away, all them things. Six o'clock run got in at six o'clock yesterday and left for Amarillo. No accidents, no delays. No, nothing. What are you talking about? I ought to know I was on that stage with poor Hiram Short and James Underwood. Mr. Underwood's inside now. After the accident, we had to walk, and then... What's all this about, Marshal? Somebody's been murdered, Crandall. Murdered? Let's see if you can identify the body. Never seen him before. You wasn't here when we came in. Me and Underwood and poor Hiram. Well, let's have a talk with your friend Underwood. Pete, tie the horses up over there. Frank Welch? At your service, gentlemen. Uh-uh. Don't shoot, Marshal. I'll go quietly. I'd like to see one of your guests, Mr. Underwood. Underwood? No one with that name around here. Are you going to give me trouble, too? Underwood came in here last night with me. His name is right there on the register where I put it. Here. Well, well, that's a different one. Get me the night clerk. That's the same book we've had for months. We haven't got a night clerk. Never did have. Are you crazy? You had one last night. He was right here in this room with George the Porter. And he gave George... George the Porter? <laughs> we haven't got a porter. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, he ain't real. But I tell you, Marshal Underwood is here. He's right upstairs in his room. Let's have a look. Very well. We 
Which one? Right down there at the end of the hall. This is? Yeah. You. There isn't any underwood around here. And as for this room, well, I've owned halfway house for nine years, and that's how long this has been a storeroom. Well. Wait a minute. Come here. Maybe I... Maybe I got the wrong room. Maybe it's this one. No! Sorry, lady. I tried to stop you. That's Mrs. Pettigrew's room. It sure is. Well, looks like I'm cracked, don't it, Marshal? But I could have sworn that last night, Mr. There Ar he is. That's the murdering ruffian. Frank Wells grabbed him. He'd got an ounce of manhood in you. Just a moment, madam. This man didn't intend to frighten you, ma'am. He walked into your room by mistake. Why did you call him a murderer? Because he's a spitting image of Jasper, that's why. Who's Jasper? He was Henry's, rest his soul, he was Henry's half-brother. Henry was Mr. Pettigrew. Yeah, rest his soul. Well, what about Jasper? Hanged for stabbing a man in the back. Oh. Well, Mr. Welsh, I'd like to speak to Mrs. Pettigrew alone. What? Oh, oh of course, uh, I'll be downstairs. You stay right here. Pardon me. Now tell me, Mrs. Pettigrew, was there anything that disturbed your sleep last night? No, I ain't got no gilly conscience to keep me awake like some people. Then you had no reason during the night to call the night clerk. Well, it wouldn't do me no good. We ain't got no Thank night clerk. Just back. Right. Are you arresting me, Marshal? Are you confessing? How can I confess? And I don't remember doing it. Sure looks like I'm crazy. Crazy and guilty. Looks like I've been prospecting living alone too long. I'll arrest you when I know you're guilty. Not before then. So it was a murder job. Art here was just showing me the body. Could you identify it? No. No, he's a stranger to me. When is the killer's trial? Right after I catch him. You haven't got far to reach. If I was Marshal, I'd have him in jail with a jury deliberating and a hangman practicing by now. Easy, Frank. Easy. Catching crooks is the Marshal's job. And in hotels is yours, and... And running stages is mine. Say, uh, how many folks you got staying here now? Well, only one right now, uh, Mrs. Pettigrew. She's been here so long, she's almost permanent. I want to take a look around outside. Come along. Hey, that's the same stage. Yes, sir, it's the same one. You can see where it hit the rock. I'm going to take a look inside. Just go on, Cap. Remember, I told you it's one of them doohickeys Hiram Short was a seller. Doesn't this prove I've been telling the truth? It helps. Hey, you! Mister, am I glad to see you. Now, hold on a minute, will you? Marshal, you want a proof? I'll give it to you. He'll tell you all about the accident on Mr. Underwood and Hiram Short and everything. Oh, man, oh, man, where have you been? Amarilla. Oh, you found your horses, huh? No. Well, you couldn't have made Amarillo last night unless you did find them. Didn't lose them. 
Uh, your memory's about as short as your chatter. I suppose you don't remember stopping out there and picking me up out in the road. I suppose you don't remember about the outlaws that chasing us. I suppose you don't remember about the accident or nothing. No. Ain't you never seen me before? No, I'm busy. Goodbye. Uh, uh, uh. Hold on there, mister. You don't like to talk much, do you? No. You like to read letters, though, don't you? Other people's letters. No. What's your name? Ben Dolan. Well, let's see the name of that envelope inside your shirt. <laughs> mind killing Hiram Short and James Underwood. Listen, Marshal, I didn't kill Short. Underwood ain't even dead. He ain't. Where is he? He's being held at... Get that letter. James Underwood at Halfway House. Dear Dad, just a note to tell you everything is fine. I'm going south to meet you at Halfway House on Friday afternoon. Until then, your loving daughter, Marjorie. Friday, that's today. Now do you trust me, Marshal? Now do you think I've been telling you the truth? that thing will shoot? <laughs> will it shoot? <laughs> you should have seen it yesterday on the stage. Like I said, we've been chased by a dozen desperate outlaws. Three outlaws, remember? Well, seemed like more anyway. I loaded old Maggie here, and I takes a bead, and I shoots once. Let's Just go. One. Let's go. Where are we heading for, Marshal? We're heading north to meet a girl coming south. Pardon me. I'm looking for a young lady by the name oh, of... Oh, you are? Well, well. Now, ain't that nice, Matilda? I'm looking for a young man. Is your name Miss Underwood? No, oh, it don't make no difference what her names are or for she's married, because as soon as the preacher says the word, her name will be the same as yours. You sure you want to get married? Not right now. Don't look at me. I've got a message for Miss Underwood concerning her father. Well, then it can't be Matilda, because I'm her Paul. Besides, Matilda's name's Snodgrass, the same as mine. 
Seems a shame. Owen, Reginald, get up. Am I glad that's over? Had me going for a spell. Man ain't safe again a designing female. Why, I'd rather face a thousand desperate outlaws than what... That reminds me, I was telling you about old Maggie and me. Well, as I said, we was riding on the stage when them outlaws jumped us. There must have been 20 of them. How and... many? Well, three. They come a riding and a firing and a pouring out lead like rain. Well, being the sharpshooter that I am, I reaches back for old Maggie. I whips her out of her home scurry and I let... Hi! Hi! Hold it! Hold it, man! Chasing people and firing and... Oh, you're a sheriff. A marshal, ma'am. I thought you were an outlaw. Well, anyway, you shouldn't go around arresting innocent people. Please, miss. I just want to ask you a question. One question. Is your name Underwood? Yes. Marjorie Underwood. Why? I've got something to tell you concerning your father. What's happened? Hi, Rocky! Rocky! Matilda dang near trapped me. Please, Marshal, tell me what's happened to my father. He's disappeared. Well, isn't he at that place called the Halfway House? Well, nobody there seems to have ever seen or heard of him. But Nugget here arrived there with him last night. I don't understand. Well, right now, Miss Underwood, I want you to tell me, if you can, of any reason that you know of for your father to disappear. Well, he... He was carrying a large sum of money. $50,000. He was going to buy a cattle ranch and retire. Well, $50,000 is plenty of reason. Marshal, do you think that he... No, Miss Underwood, your father is still alive. We know that. And I think we can find him if I can count on your help. He's my father. Good. Have you got any writing paper? Well, yes, right back in this bag. Now, this is the letter that you wrote to your father. It never got to Halfway House. I want you to write another one. We'll deliver it in the same envelope. Can't we write notes later? Matilda and her pa will be along any minute. What do you want me to say? Well, say that uh, you've been delayed and that you won't be able to get to Halfway House until late tonight. I wouldn't be surprised but what somebody gets curious enough to open this note and read it. And I wouldn't be surprised but what that storeroom changes furniture again. Oh. Right fast, Miss Underwood, right fast. Here comes Matilda. Good luck. Here. All right, now you know what to do. Yeah. You better give me your gun. 
You're still my prisoner, remember? Goodbye again, Maggie. Here's your mail, Frank. Thanks, Art. Still do. He's dead. Dead? Murdered. He had something to say, and somebody didn't want him to say it. Look here, Marshal. Maybe it ain't none of my business, like Art says, but how many bodies you gotta have before you arrest the killer? Well, this is one killing he had nothing to do with. He was with me when it happened. When you jump to a conclusion, Frank, you make a mighty long jump. Thief, stop him! He's stealing the mail! Hey, I wasn't stealing the mail. I, 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 there it is. He's got it hid behind him. Let me have that letter. But listen, Let I... me have it. But... Mr. James Underwood, Halfway House, Contra County, Texas. Well, what do you know? What did I do with it? Keep it. I'll pick it up later. I don't understand it, Marshal. First he commits murder, then he steals mail, and he ain't arrested. Now, look here. I didn't murder no one. And as for I'm that... I'm taking you to Amarillo and holding you in custody. High time. At last, you're coming to your senses. Well, I thought... I'm warning you. Anything you say will be held against you. Crandall, how about the load that horse he's been riding to take him in on? I'll return it when I come back. Certainly, Marshal. I'm sorry, Rocky. I didn't know that old biddy was coming down. Wait right here. I left my glove somewhere. There it is. Let's go. This is far enough. Ain't I under arrest? No, sir, you're not. Oh, look here, Rocky. Lock me up. I got bells in my battery. I mean, bats in my belfry. <laughs> I could have swore you said you was going to arrest me and take me to Amarillo. I said just that. I wanted that letter to look like the real article. Besides, I want whoever took it to think that I won't be around tonight when Miss Underwood arrives. But we are going to Amarillo. We're going to see Miss Underwood. don't get it. Why'd they want to kill a U.S. Marshal? 
It's an old outlaw trick, Nugget, and a good one when it works. If you want to murder a law officer, kill him and his prisoner. And it looks like they killed each other. But I still say, why'd they want to kill you? So I won't come back to Halfway House. service? Yes. I would like a room. I believe my father, Mr. James Underwood, is here. Indeed he is. Do you uh, care to register? Mr. Underwood said that he would wait up for you. If you'd like, I'll show you to his room. Thank you. You uh, are alone, Miss Underwood? Yes, I am. I would like someone to take care of my horses. Oh, yes, I'll have George, my porter, attend to it. This way, please. another place to which I shall now take you. Detaining him? But why? Because he's remarkably stubborn and has concealed a large amount of money and refuses to tell the boss where. Now that we have you, I believe he'll change his mind. don't you? You know he's dead, don't you? What more do you want? I wanted him able to talk. Able to tell me which one of those people hired him. 
You mean one of the people at Halfway House? At Halfway House. Let's get back. Catch anybody, Marshal? Only a couple of dead men. Oh. Well, whoever changed that room put all the storeroom junk and a lot more in the attic. Did you find out anything about my father? Not yet, Miss Underwood. But if we don't find out something soon... I'm going to give you something to do besides worry. Would you round up those folks out there and have them wait downstairs? Yes, of course. What are we going to do now? Find the $50,000. I don't think we're going to find it here, though. This place has been combed over long ago. That's Underwood's claim check. I checked his stuff downstairs. And that's where the money is with his baggage. Well, I don't think his gear will still be there, but let's take a look. All right, Nugget. Where did you put Mr. Underwood's things? Back there. You're right, Marshal. His stuff's gone. Are you sure you put everything in there? You're sure. He had a big bag, a hat box, and that's all. Oh, oh, oh set in a little package about so big. Where'd you put that? I didn't. George took it. I thought you said George wasn't real. Look, Marshal, maybe I ain't very smart. But when he can't touch a man, see a man, or hear a man, I say he ain't real. Right? That's right. I suppose you show us just what happened. Well, the stuff was all in a heap. And I picks up my stuff here and I put it back here. Then I took Hiram Schwartz and I put it back there. Then I take Mr. Underwood's hat box and I put it here. And then I take bag and put... Oh, well, that reminds me. Your, your father had a cane. I put that, uh, I, oh, I know, I, under my arm. Uh, here. Like this. Then I put the stuff away. Well, go ahead, put it away. Are you serious? I'm serious. All right. That's all. Just a minute. package. Where was it? Right there. Put that last bag away again. I'm getting tuckered. It's heavy. Open it, Miss Underwood. Father's money. Fifty thousand dollars. I've never seen so much money. This is why your father is still alive. Whoever's holding him thinks he knows where the money is and they're trying to force him to tell. Suppose I keep it for you. Of course. I want to question each and every one of you. Suppose you go to your rooms, I'll call you as I want you. Sure thing, Marshal. You first, Nugget. Miss Underwood. Sorry, Miss Pettigrew. Besides, that thing isn't loaded. Well, of course not. You don't think I'd be carrying it around if it was, do you?
take this hat and jacket. Nugget, get your horse. And you, Miss Underwood, you tag along, Nugget. What I can't figure is, even if that old prospector is guilty, how and when did he move my storeroom back and forth? One thing's sure, Frank. He had nothing to do with it. He's been with the marshal all the time. If you got the idea I grabbed Underwood and changed that room, you're crazy. Still jumping to conclusions, eh, Frank? All right. Make it good. Randall, your turn. This certainly beats me, Marshal. Do you have any ideas? Maybe. I thought you might begin by telling me everything you know about Frank Welch. Why? Do you suspect him? Let me ask the questions. Thanks, Crandall, for the information. I'd feel a lot better, though, if this money were locked up. You got a strong box? I sure have, Marshal. Right in my desk. I use it for valuable express shipments and things like that. Do you mind? Not at all. Father will be with us. We're we'll getting light soon. We shouldn't have much trouble trailing him. Him? Who's him? Crandall. Crandall? That's right. He gave himself away when he saw the money and mentioned fifty thousand dollars. How do you know how much it was unless Mr. Underwood told him? something? Where's the girl? We don't need her, Sam. I got the money. How? Ah, the marshal gave it to me, and we won't be needing Underwood anymore either. Go get him. My daughter, I... she's all right, Underwood. So stop fussing. Of course, she won't inherit much when you die. Know what I mean? Go ahead, Sam. Here. Sam, keep us covered. Oh. Under 
Guard, you're coming along as our protection. Get him. What's in there? Part or all of this is yours. <laughs> no, thanks, Mr. Underwood. Goodbye, Marshal. Good luck. Thanks again, Rocky. How about come along with me, old timer? Ah, me go with you? Uh -uh. Too much shooting and excitement where you are. No, I'm the quiet kind. I'm going to hold in here for a spell. <laughs> Hold everything. I've changed my mind. <laughs> 